This is KGW News at noon. Oregon's longest serving U.S. House member is retiring. Congressman Peter DeFazio made the announcement today. Hello everyone, I'm Brenda Braxton. The 74-year-old Democrat was first elected in 1986 and says he will not seek re-election next year. DeFazio is the chairman of the House Transportation Committee and he helped craft the Biden administration's trillion dollar infrastructure deal. He represents Oregon's 4th District, which covers Southwest Oregon from the California border up to Albany. The district had been seen as a safe seat for Democrats, especially after state lawmakers passed their new redistricting plan. We do expect to hear from DeFazio coming up at 1230. He'll be speaking to the media. He did call being a congressman the greatest honor of my life. Well, arguments are underway in the U.S. Supreme Court over the most serious challenge to abortion rights in more than 30 years. Mississippi's attorney general is asking the justices to overturn Roe v. Wade, the 1973 ruling legalizing abortion. NBC's Alice Barr reports from Washington, D.C. Hundreds of supporters from both sides of this deeply contentious issue gathering outside the Supreme Court today as inside justices hear arguments in the most consequential case on abortion rights in a generation. There are 24 states poised to ban abortion if this law is upheld um, by the Supreme Court and that would really cause chaos. This is a historic day for the pro-life movement as we know this is the first time in uh, since I was seven years old that the Supreme Court has decided to revisit Roe. At issue, a Mississippi law that bans nearly all abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. That directly contradicts the current standard established nearly 50 years ago in Roe v. Wade that stops states from banning abortion before a fetus can survive outside the womb around 23 to 24 weeks. Mississippi's governor argues there's no justification for the viability standard. There is no fundamental right in our United States Constitution to an abortion. Lawyers for the Soul Clinic in Mississippi that performs abortions argue the law violates long-held precedent. And analysts note many constitutional rights are not explicitly spelled out, like the right to marry. The court has held that the Constitution protects those kinds of intimate decisions. And that, too, is the logic underlying the right to an abortion. Conservative Justice Brett Kavanaugh today raised the question of whether the high court should leave abortion rights up to the states since the Constitution doesn't directly address it, while liberal Justice Sonia Sotomayor asked whether the court would, quote, survive the stench of overturning Roe v. Wade, which she says would appear political. That was Alice Barr reporting. A teenager has been charged with murder and terrorism for a shooting that happened at a Michigan high school yesterday. A fourth person died today and seven others are injured. Police say the 15-year-old gunman opened fire just after lunch. He's being charged as an adult with one count of terrorism causing death, four counts of first-degree murder, and seven counts of assault with intent to murder. Investigators say the boy was armed with a semi-automatic handgun purchased last week by his father. Well, health officials say the first Omicron COVID case here in the U.S. has been found in San Francisco. Dr. Anthony Fauci says the person was a traveler who had returned from South Africa on November 22nd and tested positive seven days later. Authorities say the person was vaccinated but had not received a booster shot. The CDC recommends boosters for everyone 18 and older who got vaccinated at least six months ago. Vaccines and particularly boosters give a level of antibody that even with variants like Delta give you a degree of cross protection, particularly against severe disease. Experts say it's going to take about two weeks to know how severe Omicron is and how effectively vaccines can fight it. If necessary, new vaccines could be ready in about three months. Well, Oregon is developing a new optional digital vaccine card. Washington already has one. It launched last week. Officials say it'll be convenient because you won't need to carry around that paper card anymore. Pat Doris has details on how it'll work. 
Right now in Oregon, no state law or rule requires proof of a COVID vaccination before you enter a restaurant or other businesses. But those businesses are free to create their own rules, and many have. Jason Brandt is president and CEO of the Oregon Restaurant and Lodging Association. Are a lot of restaurants and businesses requiring it for people to come in? It's quite a mixed bag out there. Want to attend a Blazers game or a concert at the Motor Center? You'll have to prove vaccination or a recent negative test. The publication Eater recently listed more than 100 bars and restaurants where proof is also required, which may be one reason the Oregon Health Authority is creating a digital vaccine card and corresponding verification system, which will be voluntary and free for anyone in the state. The OHA's public health director, Rachel Banks, showed lawmakers samples at a recent hearing. What we'd have is a user who would request to get their vaccine records using things like name, date of birth, telephone number, email. A person would be sent a smart health card. That's the image there in the middle of the screen. It would have a QR code that would hold information about the vaccination status. They could then show that to a business and the business person would have a way to verify that it was accurate. Banks expects it to be out this spring. Our overall will clearly work through the new year in terms of uh, continuing that testing and communications and uh, intend to launch in, in March. A similar system is already available in Washington state, where King County does require proof of vaccination to dine indoor or attend sporting events and other activities. Mary Carrillo with the American Immunization Registry Association told Oregon lawmakers that nine states now offer smart cards and 20 more, including Oregon, have projects in the works. And really the goal is to create one consolidated record for every individual within a jurisdiction. The idea is not unique. Apple has a way to store your vaccine information on your phone. And a lot of us simply have pictures of our vaccination cards there as well. Brandt from the Restaurant Association wonders if it's really a waste of time and money. It really feels to me, especially when you go to large events and the cell towers are overloaded uh, with activity, I'm not sure that anything other than a photo on your phone, which so many of us already have, is, is really necessary to, to fully verify your vaccine status. That was Pat Doris reporting. We want to talk about crabbing season for a second because it kicked off this morning at 9 o'clock on the Oregon coast. It's the first time since 2015 that commercial Dungeness crabbing has started the season on time. It gets postponed for lots of reasons. Sometimes the crabs are just too small or there are toxins in the water or the crabs just need time to repopulate. So check out this live picture of Yaquina Bay in Newport. All is calm, but you know that is a very busy place. Vessels have been allowed to drop pots since Sunday, anticipating the first pull, which happened just a few hours ago. Okay, it is mild on the coast and here in town as well today. Chris, temps are near record highs. Yeah, today's record high, 61. Set back in 1958 here in Portland. There's a reasonable chance that we hit that this afternoon. All right, live look from our Rose City Sky Camera right now, showing a little broken cloud cover over downtown Portland, but uh, it is continuing to break up here as we go into the uh, into the afternoon hours. All right, let's go ahead and uh, you know what? I'm not sure why my weather clicker is not moving, so I'm going to slide over here and show you temperature wise 59 at PDX last check 52 in Beaverton and King City in the big picture across the state of Oregon right now. After a cold start, Baker City has warmed into the 40s at last report. All right, near record warmth this afternoon, as we mentioned, that changes tonight. Clouds and sprinkles roll in. And then as we go into the day tomorrow, cooler with some clouds early and uh, a wind shift, which will lead to an even cooler morning, I think, on Friday. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Chris. Also coming up, big changes could be on the way, impacting how thousands of Portland kids will learn for the rest of the year.